Do you know the measure being put in place by the UK government to cut down net migration is politically motivated? It is true that net migration is actually high in the UK, but the drastic measures that are being put to cut down net migration in the UK by the UK government are all politically motivated. This and many more I'll be sharing with you in this video. If you care to know more about this, you need to stick with me to the end of this video so you can get the full information. Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. As you all know, my name is Victor. In this channel, I give latest updates on UK immigration, just like the information I'll be sharing with you in a minute. I also give latest updates on ways you can study abroad. So if this content looks exciting to you and you get value for this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you can join the amazing ever-growing family. So guys, without further ado, let's get straight into today's uh, video. Most of the measures being put in place by the UK government to cut down net migration are all politically motivated. In a bid to fulfill some of the electoral promises they made to their constituents, some of the drastic measures that have been put in place to cut down net migration by the UK government are politically motivated, right? During the last electionary campaign, they made promises to their constituents, which is one of their major campaign strategy to cut down net migration. About three and a half years after the last general election, net migration are still not reduced. With that, the electorate are seeing them as a failed government because they have not been able to um, implement their campaign promises, which is to cut down net migration. These are some of the reasons why the UK government is coming up with some of these drastic measures to cut down net migration, even when some of the policies is not favorable to the UK economy. Some of the argument they've put forward is the increase in net migration has put pressure on the housing sector and other public facility like the NHS and the likes. No doubt that net migration has actually increased in the UK, but there's so much benefit the UK government derived from the uh, net migration. Migrants coming to the UK pay fees for visa, pay IHS fee, and pay all manner of fees for them to be able to come into the UK. And when they arrive in the UK, they work on a full-time and part-time basis, and they pay tax to the UK government. All of those activities contribute to UK economy and, in the long run, contribute to UK GDP growth. In their view, they feel migrants benefit more from the increase in net migration than the UK economy. Some of the MPs argue that migrants are taking over most of the key sectors and other uh, benefits that is being accrued to um, the UK uh, citizen, which in my view, I do not agree with that. The UK economy is actually benefiting more from the increase in net migration. With the general election coming up later this year, and with all of these measures being put in place by the UK government to cut down net migration, more proposal has also been put in place to see how net migration will be further and reduced in a bid to fulfill some of their campaign promises, which is to cut down net migration. I'll be sharing with you some of the proposals that they've recently put in place to further cut down net migration. And note, this will be coming up before the next general election. As the election is drawing closer, more measures is being put in place to cut down net migration to prove to the electorate that they have met some of their campaign promises they made in the last general election. One of the proposals that they've put forward is to reduce the number of persons coming into the UK through the head and care worker visa to just 30,000 per annum. 30,000 per annum on health and care worker visa do not only cover carers visa only. The health and care visas is a sector that comprises doctors, nurses, physiotherapists, radiographers, health care workers, senior health care workers, and all that. So if they are reducing it to just 30,000 per annum, that is to say the future of those planning to come into the UK through the health and care workers' right will be dashed. In 2023, the number of persons that came into the UK on a carer visa only 
is more than 30,000, far more than 30,000. Now, if you are adding both doctors, physiotherapists, radiographer, and all other uh, discipline within the health and care sector, you find that 30,000 is just a chunk that is coming out from a single country like Nigeria, Pakistan, China, and India. So the UK government is coming up with this new proposal, which in my view, it will come up before the next general election later this year. This will further dash the hope of so many persons that are planning to come into the UK on a health and care visa route. That is not the only proposal they are coming up with. They are also coming up with a proposal to stop recruiting nurses from abroad. They want to emphasize recruitment of nurses to those currently studying in the UK. So employers can only recruit international uh, students who are currently studying nurses. They want to finally stop recruitment of nurses from abroad. Also, nurses who are coming from a red list country will not be able to get employment in the UK. A few months back, when the names of red list countries were uh, released, employers were kind of skeptical on what to do and what not to do. But there was a clarification to that effect stating that if the individual is applying on its own, employers can recruit them. But if they are coming in through an agent, no employer should accept them. So after that, most employers keep recruiting from red list country if you make your application on your own without agent or assistance from an agent, you can get a job from a red list country. But the government is coming up with a new proposal, putting a final stop to that recruitment. Before the proposal will come into place, most employers are no longer recruiting from red list country. They will tell you for health reason and all that, uh, reasons that we are there before when they are still recruiting. But all of a sudden, they've changed the tactics of not recruiting nurses from Red List country. These are part of the proposal that are currently being considered to be implemented before the next general election. All of these changes is not beneficial to the UK economy. There's still thousands of job vacancies within the health and care sector. The fact that net migration is actually high, there still exists a lot of vacancy in that area. To further confirm the fact that the measures that are being put in place are politically motivated. Those coming in from Ukraine as a result of the Russia-Ukraine uh, war are not being considered in all of this. Thousands of migrants came in through that route. That is not being considered as the cause of the increase in net migration. Those that came from Ukraine as a result of the war, they are not skilled workers that have any visa restriction on where to work and how many hours they can work, right? Some of them are just in this country, living with their family, living with their friends, and even the government is even giving them some assistance because of the distress they had in their country. But those that came in genuinely through a skilled workers' route, working, paying their tax and other levies, those are the people they consider to be the one increasing the number of net migration in the UK. So guys, all of these measures have been politically motivated. After the general election later this year, new status quo might come back because the UK economy is not benefiting from some of these policies the government is putting in place. And I'm sure the outcome of the next general election will determine the next phase of the migration journey. So guys, if you are planning to come into the UK, you can still come through the health and care visa route. But this time, it will be more competitive because the government is trying to reduce the number of people that are coming in through the health and care visa route. But after the next general election, I believe things will change and there will be more opportunity for those who want to come into the UK right through the health and care visa route. We've come to the end of today's video. If you gain value for this video, don't forget to subscribe to this channel to join the amazing Evergreen family. You can do that right away as you're watching. You can also give a thumb up so YouTube can recommend this content to a wider audience. See you in my next video.